Welcome to Inspiration Rising. I'm your host, David Trotter. And guess what? Today is our 100th episode. Woohoo! Hey, in light of this momentous occasion that most podcasts never actually experience, I want to share a special episode with you that encapsulates one of the biggest things that I've learned over the past year. So hang in there a minute while I reminisce for a moment. Back in January 2019, not too long ago, I started this show to inspire women and the men who support them to rise up in life, love, and leadership. And I am more excited than ever about what we're up to. Not only have we released 100 episodes, but we hosted the Inspiration Rising live, live podcast recording in Orange County, California last year. And our next live podcast recording will be held on Thursday, March 26, 2020, in Costa Mesa, California. So if you're in the area and you want to be alerted when tickets go on sale, you can go over to insporising.com and join our email list by just signing up for one of our free five meditations uh, email programs. You can sign up for that. It'll pop up, join, and you'll be notified as well when tickets come on sale for Inspiration Rising Live. Now, one of the most exciting things about the past year for me has been seeing so many people get unstuck and take their life to the next level through the Launch Your Life coaching program. And that is ultimately why I started Inspiration Rising Live. I wanted to see women and men experience a rich, meaningful life, the the life that you long for, and go after those dreams that are in your heart. So I'm excited about the people that have gone through that program and the people who will go through it over the course of the next year. Now, our biggest effort in the first part of 2020 is releasing my new book entitled Empowered to Rise, The Secret to Embracing Your True Identity, Uncovering Your Superpowers, and Bringing Your Inspiration to the World. It will be available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle during the first week of March. And the feedback that I'm getting from the launch team, who's helping kind of push the book out into the world, they're reading the manuscript and their feedback has been tremendous. Well, in light of 100 episodes, I wanted to take a moment and share one of the biggest things that I've learned over the past year. And it's this, I have something to learn from everyone. Let me say that again. I have something to learn from everyone. That is the number one thing that I have learned over the past 99 episodes. I've talked to some amazing women and a few guys, and here's what I've realized. We live in a culture where we tend to insulate ourselves from the opinions and perspectives and experiences of others. And when I don't think that I can learn from other people that are different than me, I'm saying at least one of three things, I believe. I believe that I'm saying I know everything already. There's nothing you can teach me, right? If I'm not willing to learn from the people around me, I'm essentially putting off either the air subconsciously or I'm even verbalizing it that I I know everything. There's nothing that you can teach me that I don't already know. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. And yet, when we insulate ourselves from the opinions, perspectives, and experiences of others, oftentimes that's what we're saying. Another thing that you might be saying, I might be saying, is that I already know what's right. I know for me growing up, the issue of kind of right, wrong, good, or bad was a a strong one from my spiritual upbringing and also just my personality. Um, I want to always do what's right. Well, Maybe you think that you already know what's right. I think, well, I know what's right, so I don't need to listen to someone else because I've already made up my mind. I already have my opinion set in stone. If I listen to you, I might have to change my opinion, and I'm not going to do that. So I already know what's right. right? So that, that attitude prevents us from learning from others. And the last thing that I started thinking about is when, when I don't think that I can learn from other people, one of the attitudes that comes across is, that I'm better than you. In some way, I have more value than you. I'm smarter than you. I figured things out better than you. I've had more experience than you. I'm older than you. I'm I'm privileged, more privileged than you. Whatever it is, in some way, I'm I'm better than you. And because I'm better than you, I already know what I think. I don't need to learn from others. I don't need to take in the experiences of others. The challenge is, is that when we come 
from that perspective, when we have a posture, when I have a posture that I am not willing to learn from the people around me, I end up being isolated and only tuning into the information that I already agree with, that I'm already comfortable with. And what ends up happening is that my mind and heart remain the same. They're not ever expanding, ever growing. And so here's what I've learned over the past year. I can learn from people who are off the approved list. I can learn from people who are different than me. And I can learn from people who I don't agree with. The first one, I can learn from people who are off the approved list. Now, I use that term approved list because uh, oftentimes for us, including you, me, everyone, we have an approved list in our brains that has been given to us by our home of origin or our parents. So who defined the approved list of people or books or resources that were okay for you to learn from? Maybe you grew up in a home that was conservative uh, politically, and so there are an approved list of people that you can learn from and uh, listen to and read, but if they're not kind of on that metaphorical list, if there's somebody who maybe differs politically, well, they're off the list. I mean, you just do not read their books. You do not take in a a podcast or a radio show or a TV show other than what's on the approved list. The same thing is, it it, it could be politics like that. It could be, um, one of the most common ones is religion because religions create approved lists of things that are appropriate to read, appropriate to listen to, appropriate uh, people to uh, take information in from. Otherwise, um, if they're not on that list, they're oftentimes demonized. There are people that are not okay to uh, learn from. I got to tell you, episode 95, just a few episodes ago, I had the privilege of talking to Julie Parker out of Australia, and she is a priestess, and she taught me all about what she thinks about life and coaching and spirituality and being a priestess and worshiping uh, differently than I have been used to. I mean, it was a great conversation. If you have not listened to that, it's it's fascinating. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I would say 10 years ago, 12 years ago, there's no way I would have had a conversation with Julie Parker. There's just no way because she was so far off the approved list of people that I should be learning from, even talking to. I mean, you just don't talk to people like Julie Parker. That lady is amazing. She is just full of life and energy and love. And she has a very different worldview that I am used to. And I loved it because it stretched my mind. It stretched my heart. But if I already think that I know what's right, that I know everything, then I wouldn't be able to learn from her. But if I come from a posture of a lifelong learner that I have I have the ability to learn from everyone, then I can take something in. So for me, the things that I learned from her were, wow, I learned about um, inspiration cards and oracle cards and something that was very uh, off the approved list in my um, kind of background or upbringing. I learned about priestesses. I, she talked about worshiping um, goddess. Uh, it was very interesting to me. It's not just because, and here's the thing that I want you to know. Oh my goodness. Just because you talk to someone, read a book, listen to a podcast, watch something on television, doesn't mean that you have to agree or take in everything from that person. There are things that Julie talked about that I'm like, wow, I don't know. That sounds kind of interesting. I don't know. It sounds kind of wacky. Wow. I really like that. That's interesting. Just because you have a conversation and you're in a posture of learning doesn't mean that you're taking on everything that that person is bringing to the table. You're able to just be with them as they share about their life and learn from them and be and just be even in relationship with them to connect and learn and grow. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful. And so I can learn from people who are off the approved list. How about you? Who are the people that are off your approved list? Maybe it comes. It comes. Uh, maybe it has to do with politics, religion, uh, ethnicity, gender, uh, sexual identity, uh, sexual preference, whatever it might be. Um, 
who are the people that are off your list that maybe, just maybe, if you listen to an interview, read a book, watch something on television, it might expand your mind, increase your level of compassion, and you would learn something in the process. And number two is I can learn from people who are different than me. Oftentimes, we're looking to learn from people and connect with people that look like us, sound like us, act like us, and live like us. And yet, the people that I have the most to learn from are people that are very different than me. The majority of the interviews that I've conducted over the last 99 episodes have been with women who are very different than me. And I love asking questions and oftentimes come off as ignorant because I am ignorant. I have no problem admitting that. That's the reason why I asked a question is not because I already know the answer, but because I want to know the answer, because I want to know her perspective on life. Another uh, group of people that I can learn from that are different from me are people that are older than me and people that are younger than me. Oh, I loved episode 88 with Sarah Small. It's all about turning life's breakdowns into breakthroughs. I don't know how old Sarah is. Maybe she's in her mid-20s. Oh, I loved connecting with her. She is teaching me about how to overcome adversity. I see that in her own life. I see her teaching people about manifesting and all kinds of unique things that are different than my background. And I loved having that conversation and learning from her, if I came from the posture of I can only learn from people that are of similar age or older than me that have more life experience than I do, I would miss out on having conversations like I did with Sarah, who could almost be my daughter at her age, and yet I'm learning from her because I'm taking on that posture. Another group of people that are different than me uh, is people that have from a different ethnic background. One of the conversations that I'm reminded of when I think about that is episode 52 with Anita Stoudmire. She's African-American, and I really would like to have more African-American women on our podcast. I need to be more uh, intentional about cultivating connections and relationships with African-American women to have them on the show. I'm, I'm committed to doing that in 2020. But I loved Anita. Um, she comes from a very different perspective on love. And actually, she's probably a little bit more um, conservative than I am in some of these areas. Um, but she has a different perspective because of her the culture in which she has grown up and oftentimes the culture of people that she interacts with. I loved learning from her. And one of the biggest places and the most challenging, and we don't talk about politics hardly at all on this uh, podcast because, one, I just don't want to be that divisive. It's not of interest to me. And although I'm interested in politics, I don't oftentimes have strong opinions or perspectives on that. But I will tell you that in this day and age, we are so divided as a country when it comes to political issues that I can learn from people that are more conservative, more progressive. I can learn from everyone. And so I listen to shows and have conversations with people that are different than me. Number three, I can learn from people who I don't agree with. Whoa, I can learn from people who I don't agree with. Now, that doesn't mean I don't agree with everything about them, but you may have a conversation with someone on a certain topic that you just go, eh, I just don't agree with you on that, or I just don't resonate with you on that. I think about our most popular episode over the last 100 was episode number 37 with Lindsay Elmore, all about essential oils. That was by far our most popular episode. I asked her some really hard questions about essential oils. I ordered essential oils. I messed around with essential oils. And, you know, it's not that I don't think that they work or do their thing. I just don't, I just don't need essential. I, at this point in my life, I don't want essential oils in my life. It feels like something extraneous, like something else I have to think about in order to swab on myself or douse or spray or spritz or diffuse or whatever. I'm sure they're great. People love them. My wife uses them in her, in her classroom, which is great. 
I just, I just don't. I'm just not into it, right? But I learned so much in that conversation with Lindsay. I follow her on social media. I'm always learning things from her, even though I don't necessarily, I don't even, maybe the words agree with are way too strong, probably resonate with. How about that? I think about episode 45 with Rachel Dillon. She is a cold brew chick. That's what she calls herself. I tried coffee for the second time in my life. It was a cold brew coffee that I committed to her that I would try and drink. Eh, you know what I didn't like about it? It tasted like coffee. Ugh, I'm just not into coffee. It's just not my thing. I don't agree with Rachel's passion for cold brew coffee. Once again, too strong of a word. I don't resonate with it. It's not my thing. She can drink all the coffee she wants. Lindsay Elmore can drink all the essential oils. Not drink. Eat, drink, swab, lather on, take a bath in, whatever it is. But just because I don't necessarily resonate with their passion in those things doesn't mean that I can't appreciate them, cheer them on, and learn from them in the process. I think about if I did not have the perspective of being a lifelong learner, in the last year, I would not have learned that my parents and I need to talk about their finances. Thank you to my conversation with Cameron Huddleston. I'm more aware of the health challenges that many women face, especially autoimmune and thyroid conditions. Thank you to Dr. Maggie Yu, Stacey Robbins, and Dr. Bita Yadidi. I am incredibly aware of the health challenges of breast implants. Thank you to Diane Kayser and the two episodes that we did on that topic. I'm more open and interested to other spiritual perspectives. Thank you to Adi Shakti, Sarah Small, Julie Parker, and Stacey Robbins. And I'm more aware than ever of the food that I consume, although it needs to be more and more vegetables. Thank you to Maria Marlowe and Karen Martell. And I'm more aware than ever that many women feel used, looked over, and devalued by the cultures of our world. And my hope is that Inspiration Rising will be a source of strength and courage and, of course, inspiration. I want you to know that you are inspired, that you have life breathed into you by the divine, that you are loved just the way you are, and you are enough. You don't have to do or be anything else to be enough because you already are enough. We have so much to learn from one another, don't we? And what would it look like for you and I to ask, what can I learn in all the moments of life, especially when we're put off or perturbed or disagree with someone? What can I learn in this moment? I am trying to take that posture on more and more. And this podcast, the Inspiration Rising podcast, has helped me do that. Now, I would like to ask you a favor. On our 100th episode together, will you share your favorite episode with a friend? The primary way that people find out about podcasts is through word of mouth. And so if Inspiration Rising has inspired or educated you in some way, Think about taking a screenshot of this episode on your phone, send it to a friend and tell them to search for Inspiration Rising on their podcast app. I think we should do another hundred episodes. What do you think? 